Hello everyone, Nicole Steckline, Technical Agronomist for DeKalb and Asgrow in Northeast Iowa. I have been getting a lot of phone calls, text messages, pictures about the frost that we received in Northeast Iowa. Um, been getting reports from anywhere from Alamakee, Winnishie counties, Fayette, as far south as Dyersville and Dubuque County. Even some reports on Twitter as far south as Rowley, Iowa. Now you might be thinking to yourself, we didn't get that cold. It was not 32 degrees. The lowest I saw was in the low 40s on uh, as far as temperature goes. First things first, we need to remember that we don't necessarily need a killing frost or 32 to 28 degrees to get freeze or frost damage. Not only that, but the most places where we're seeing this damage is in our low-lying areas where that cool air is going to settle, as well as along our grass um, waterways or other um, dense areas of vegetation, such as along a timber or along our ditches. So the big question obviously is, are these plants going to die? Now the biggest thing is there's a lot of corn out there getting to that V5, V6, V7 um, point, which is when we get that growing point very close to the soil surface or a little bit higher up on that plant even. I don't think in the corn we're going to see a whole lot of plant death. Now a big reason for that is because we probably didn't get cold enough for a killing frost especially if you are in a tillage system um, in a lot of those fields I'm seeing where those lower leaves actually were unharmed by the frost and that's because overnight you get that radiant energy that radiant heat coming off from the soil surface and it keeps that level of air that's closest to the soil surface warm enough so that you don't see that frost damage like you do in the upper canopy the other thing we have to kind of think about is that we are at v6 at that point, um, you're getting that determination of the ear girth. So we could potentially see some pinched ears, some things like that um, from this event. The next thing we'll have to worry about is getting that new growth to push through. It's like if somebody slapped a huge piece of wet cardboard on you, like it might be hard to tear through that. So if we can get some heat, some sun, some wind, no rain, which is a little counterintuitive at this point. Um, if we can get that tissue to dry out and kind of get a little bit crusty, it's gonna be easier for those plants to grow through that dead tissue. Otherwise, we might get some of those plants tying up a little bit. Next thing is the soybeans. So <clears throat> in most cases, these beans are probably going to be okay. Now those beans growing point are exposed and they are at the top of the plant. But even when you think about like um, if a deer comes and bites the tip of that bean plant off, it might have lost its primary growing point, that apical meristem, but it doesn't kill that bean because it has some leaves left and it's going to throw axillary buds off and continue growing and continue branching. Now, the beans that I'm most worried about are those that were later, later planted and no-tilled and those ones that looked like they were struggling already because of droughty soil conditions as well as sucking up herbicide um, in poor growing conditions. So those fields are probably the first bean fields that I'm really going to be looking at. Um, everyone's, you know, sending pictures about the corn because right now it's very, very, very visual. So um, all those things, although things are really visual right now and we want to go out and look at them, give yourself about five to six days because we won't have any answers until then and until that dead tissue, tissue starts to show up. So on the corn, what you'll want to do is take it and split it down the center and look at the growing point and see if you still have firm, white, healthy tissue in there. On the soybeans, you're going to want to check that growing point at the very tip. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you still have some good leaf tissue. And then if you have that growing point that died, you're going to want to make sure that you're still getting some more axillary buds sprouting from the base of those petioles. When it comes to what sort of yield loss could we be having, yield loss is going to be very similar to any yield loss that we would receive if we had um, a hailstorm come through and defoliate us right now. Because essentially that's what we're seeing is defoliation from the frost. So that's going to be about the amount of yield loss that we'll see. We could potentially see increased yield loss if we do have um, some arrested ear development or some pinched ears because of this stress happening during V6, during that um, girth determination. If you have any questions, please call, text, or email.